This video should give you an overview of the controllers section and the different properties for controllers uh, in the UDC software. So the controllers properties on the right, we select the controllers tab down here at the bottom and you see there's different tabs along the top. These are different types of controllers uh, that we can add in the UDC software. So let's start at the beginning and add a UDC 210. Type in the name of whatever you want to name your controller and click Add con New Controller. And then you see in the Controller Interface section, the UDC 210 gives us 21 buttons. Uh, these are virtual buttons that can also uh, relate to a physical controller. The UDC 210 is a uh, USB connected 21 button controller uh, the, and the buttons are laid out like this, how you see them in our software. Now let's go add a UDC 400. And you see another tab comes up here. So as you can see, we can have multiple controllers uh, with one instance of the software. So a UDC 400, a 40 button uh, controller. Um, and by default, we make the buttons different colors. So the LEDs on the UDC 400 display different colors, uh, showing, you, showing the user that you have the ability to easily change the colors of these buttons. So back in the properties of the UDC 400 controller, we have options. You can reassign controller IDs for use with multiple UDC 400s. If I click the hide button numbers, you see the button numbers go away on all the buttons. Or I can enable those. <clears throat> you can load a uh, background image just by clicking the plus sign. Now we have a nice background for our uh, controller interface. And we can also change the size uh, to fit the display on your machine. So on this machine, to see all 40 buttons, we'd want the size like this. Uh, if you choose to maintain aspect ratio, the slider bar will maintain the aspect ratio. If you want to set a custom aspect ratio, just unselect this checkbox and type in a custom uh, width and height for your controller interface. This is mostly designed for use with the web server uh, so that you can build custom controller interfaces to fit the screen resolution uh, of your web server. So moving on to custom controllers at the tab up here. So we'll add a custom controller. You name it, click add controller. So now we get this blank slate for a custom controller. Uh, this is where you're going to build your custom user interfaces, uh, mainly for use on you know, touchscreen interfaces, the web server type uh, control interface. So in the properties of our custom controller, we find the Add button. So once we click the Add button, and we click it again and again, we see buttons appearing in the controller interface. Just as we did in the UDC 400, there's more options here. We can adjust the size, add a background image, hide button numbers. So with custom controllers, you're most likely going to want to uh, move the buttons to build a, a custom look and feel for you. So you want to go up here to the move buttons, click on that. Now you're able to drag and drop these buttons wherever you choose. And in the properties of the button, you can say set custom sizes, custom height, custom width, for example. Uh, you can set Z index of buttons so that uh, you can uh, you tell the software which buttons you want underneath or on top of other buttons. Um, you can load you can load images on buttons. Um, you can change the button color. So there's quite a few different types of options here uh, to let to allow users to build a real custom configuration. More on that later. So back to controllers. Listen and learn 
is a very unique feature to the UDC software. So if we want to add a listen and learn controller, I'll show you, I'll touch into this briefly uh, and explain more in a, a new video to come. But we have some different options here for the properties of the controller. Uh, TCP, UDP, RS-232. Uh, this determines the connection to the computer. The uh, point of the Listen and Learn controller is if you have a physical controller such as a TV switcher um, or uh, an outdated controller that might have worked with old technology but the uh, technology that it worked with might be outdated and you want to reuse that controller, uh, you can use our Listen and Learn feature, hook up the controller to the computer running UDC software and um, learn incoming commands. So when you uh, are in record mode, which you'll find up here under listen and learn, you can start recording, press a button on your controller that's hooked up to the computer, and you'd see a button pop up here with a listening string and uh, which contains the uh, command, whatever your controller is, uh, whatever commands that button set out. Uh, well, I'll have a video uh, to go in more detail on this later. So moving on to RCPs. So we have several RCP options from Lightware. And if I add one of these controllers, I named it Lightware RCP, and you can see it here. We designed this user interface to, so that it would look just like the front panel of the router uh, and just like the front of the physical RCP unit. Uh, this is a 16 by 16 uh, Lightware RCP that has a specific mode to run as a UDC and it is rack mountable. We also have a 32 by 32 Lightware RCP which you can see here gives you up to 64 buttons. Actually a few more buttons because you have these uh, side configuration buttons and any of these buttons can be used as a UDC. So when I click on this last button here, you see I get normal button properties just like in, on any other controller. So we've, uh, when the Lightware is in UDC mode, we have uh, specially designed this uh, to work with the Lightware RCPs when in UDC mode to turn any Lightware RCP into a universal device controller. So you could control Lightware, routers, uh, Spider video processors, Playback Pro, uh, video players, whatever you, whatever you want, Christie projectors, uh, anything and everything uh, from this one central rack mountable uh, remote control panel. 